We'll see if Sands goes into the Harrogate again. He has played the hero one time this season. Just want to know. It's the X factor kind of in the draft here. First ban, obviously, goes to Raven. They don't switch up and go for the map pick. I think you're right. I think they were the only team to do it at this tournament and only once, if I'm not mistaken. But still a rare scenario. I feel underutilized, though, by teams, because when you pick the map, you also get the second pick rotation where you get two heroes. If you have a specific draft on the map, that could work out really well. That's right, but you only get two before the band phase, so that's one thing also less favoring for your team. There's a standard ban of Tastar from, from Raven and Mighty. Of course, Vala is an option. Maybe they want it they want to take it for themselves and leave it as an option to Raven as they can take both at the same time. Let's see if they ban out Kerrigan here. It wouldn't shock me. The Vala pick is not that terrifying right now for Raven. I feel like mechanically they just might not be good enough to use it. They're going to stick with the Zeratul though. This feels very familiar. See if we see the Malfurion come in here for Raven. They should go triple tank again. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Definitely a better map for it than Hearst Hollow, though, I'd say. Not as good as the first map uh, BOE, but... Let's see if they want to change it up here. I mean, Vol is available, but... Just not the style of Raven to have the mechanics to back that up. You know what I mean? Let's go, Kerrigan. Never mind. It is Dehaka. They are going to go towards that global. Uh oh. oh uh, Could be the Zarya Vala. Or just Zarya Kerrigan should be enough. That's actually a good point. Um, then they go into Ariel, and I'm like, ooh. Uh, it is going to be Vala. With Zarya's shield, they don't even necessarily need Ariel. It's Maybe that, Ben. It's the good old uh, Zarida. Z what? <laughs> You're trying to combine everything here, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to do the Korean thing where I make every two hero combination a word. Um, well, this is obviously to start things off good. Raven will just have to ban the Ariel in uh, their banning phase. And they're going to have to think of a way to deal with this composition. Burst damage has kind of been the way normally to deal with this. You just kill the Vala either through. In a, an insane amount of CC or an insane amount of burst, or um, something like a Gul'dan, Horrify can knock the Bala and the Ariel both out of line, and then you. Um, and with Gul'dan, they can also take Ariel away, and they have two picks here. That's actually a good, good point. They could do that. I wouldn't mind it at all. I think that's a very good response if they are willing to make it into that comp. But it is instead going to be Malfurion with Tychus again. This isn't. This isn't really I'm, I'm not sold on this like i feel like it's just too standard they're not really trying to like they've given mighty some of the best tools in the game to work with there's the gladon ban they go mighty some of the best tools in the game to work with and they're just kind of saying well we're just gonna deal with this like it's any other run of the mill comp this has to be an Oreo ban at least they're able to figure that much out it's a bust i might eat of course, they knew it before. I don't think they necessarily have to go to support. That's when you go Kerrigan Tyrael. Dust off your hands and call it a night. Oh, yeah. Shield from Daria. I don't, think, I don't think they will, but I think the Tyrael is going to be on the board no matter what. I, I would love to see the Kerrigan come in. You know, Arthas Lu the Lucio. And with Taika's on the other side, having the Arthas to be a strong frontliner to soak up. Lots of damage. Could still be a Terial fifth pick. Raven could also run the Terial, but not feeling this confident in that. Lucio's been the hot healer in this series. He's actually got an insane win rate at nine and four now. What's the answer here? Lei Ming's got good burst, but you've got so much to block down for Vala. I think Gul'dan was a very good option, not an answer, but it is, it's already banned out. Which yeah, mighty. they took the mouth Tychus in that rotation instead. Which again, I feel like is kind of a weak response. It's not bad, but it's not good enough. 
they can still take Tyrael away. I think it's a good, very good chance for them to step up, especially for Tychus to do a lot of damage. Even with Leeming would be perfectly fine. And Ragnar also also very strong when Molten Core is popped during that Shrine phase. They do take the Tyrael, as I was describing earlier, and Sergeant Hammer. Will they ever be able to kill Vala with this? That's the question. Tyrael can help them dive harder and heavier. But I feel like this is, like, Vala her, herself does really well in this composition. Ooh. It's gonna be, and they are just about the triple tank. Vala does well in this comp. They have Arthas and Zarya, so clearing the Skeletal Defenders is gonna be easy for Mighty. They've got good lockdown for Hammer now with the Varian. And the roots have been really, really consistent for Joker. Raven has the better comp in terms of all around, right? Their comp can accomplish almost everything. They have the global, but will they ever be able to kill the Vala when it comes to objective control? That is definitely mighty strength here. They want to close this series out 3-0. Can Raven prevent their 30th loss in HGC Korea? Let's find out right now on Infernal Shrines. Blue side, Raven, Joju on Malfurion, and Hamlin on Tychus, NMX on Sergeant Hammer, Dion on Tyrael, and H82 on Dahaka. Very talkative and angry Dahaka. Red side, Mighty, Joker on Varian, Sans on Ar Arthas, Magi on Zarya, Nasang on Lucio, and SDE on Vala. Looking at the ranks, if yeah. Mighty wins 3 0 today. They would tie exactly with five wins, five losses, 17 to 21 with GG at fourth place. Nice, just on the cusp. This level one here, obviously, going to be favored for Mighty because of the pressure, in the, or rather, in terms of um, tower pressure. But Sands in trouble, going to get blown up here. First blood will go to Raven. Was a good rotation down. Raven actually got lucky in where they went to stop the level one push. So that worked very well for them. And now Magi's just gonna do what he can, but he can't go any much further. Ooh, dangerous. Hamlet on the chase. And very low does Magi go. He does avoid that route, just barely getting over the gate in time. Had he been rooted there on the gate, would have been lights out. Would have been a double kill for Raven. We're tied up uh, in EXP. Actually, a slight lead to Raven. As right as I was saying that, it got a huge wave lead. So. Let's see how well H82 can rotate, make his rotational work and worth for his team when he has the global potential of being the Hawkeye right now. Sans would need to rotate and join his team for team fights all the time. Really heavily pressuring the spot lane right now with the tri lane. Need to make sure that Arthas does not get caught in the top lane. Looks like he does avoid that gank attempt up there. Sans backs off. It's going to be SCE on the um, Vala this time, and I believe it is Joker on the Varian. Yeah. So, see, the big power spike for Joker obviously will be at level 10 when he gets his taunt and his extra health pool. He's a little bit stronger now with the current patch where the Nerf taunt, but gave him more health. Oh, as tanky as his new health pool is, still not able to survive this one. Zion going to aggro the fort even for this, but we'll get out. So two kills here now for Raven. Continue to be slightly ahead in ESP. Good timing on this kill, because now Joker is going to have to rotate in off a respawn for the shrine phase, so Raven will start with an advantage. Ooh, and H82 is rotating down to join his team by walking and also clear the, shr clear the shrines. Yep. Edge here for Mighty. Remember, they have the better comp for shrine control. And Joker is back into the mix, coming from the backside here, getting the big combo down onto Joju. He blows up immediately. It's a one-for-one -one trade, though, as Joker does go down. Dion bounces away with Aldruins, but this fight is already won for Mighty. Raven trying to back up, get some... Uh, perhaps they're going to go back and tap. Look at how much damage Magi does to these defenders. He's an incredible Shriner. 
uh, with the Zarya, this high energy. Yeah. And the Max is trying to steal some, but just don't feel like this is going to work out. They don't have any heals whatsoever. All they have is the shields. They do not have to sustain as Malfurion is still missing, just about to join the team fight, but numbers are already very far apart. Only four more to go for Mighty. Okay, big burrow here from HD2. They're going to steal this Shrine away. Mighty is. So it was pretty close, but I feel like, especially with a Dahaka, Raven could have been soaking more and still allowed the Punisher. Now they kind of, you know, they're slightly, I mean, very slightly ahead at EXP, but the Punisher is going to even that out in seconds. Magi, once again, high on energy. He's going to knock this wall down, despite the Punisher taking his little aggressive hop forward. And uh, the split here is good for Mighty, so they we're down in ESP by like 10% for a brief amount of time. Now they're going to be about 80% ahead. Demolitions is done. Mighty's going to hit level 7. And this is the beginning of a lead. They're even going to invade into this yeah. game. Knowing that they have lead and they're making the rotation up to get Sands. If they can make a kill, that will be worth it. But maybe... Oh, he gets... Oh, he just barely gets out of that route. Not uh -oh. even a kill. They lost the camp. Yeah, they lost the camp, Ouch. which is going to be... More pressure, plus the fact that Moggy, they cleared it so fast because Moggy was so high on energy, and he still is. Look at how quickly he's just de destroying this wall. He has demolitions completed too, mind you. And domination. With no ammo on either of those cannon towers, this is a full wave. And Mighty's being smart and pressing hard on to H82's Dehaka. Dehaka should be the one split soaking, not really taking so much damage, but he's he went all the way to bot instead. So he is also getting pressured, not really soaking up too much EXP. Okay, let's see if we actually see a collapse down here by Joker. So far the answer is no. They're still going to let this go. They have a 4v3 lead. Oh, the boop for the secure. Nasong is such a great Lucio player. I want to highlight his play more the longer this series goes on. This is going to be a one fight two now with a rotation down from Joker. Tychus is dead. Ah, oh, just I feel like that was such a weak play by Raven to not commit there. It was a 3v4 at the time, and yeah. after it was a 4v5 at the end, it became a 4v4. And Arthur's is split soaking, when Dehaka should be the one actually split soaking. Yeah, it's like Dehaka's not the solo laner, Arthur's is the solo laner. So this was what I was saying, if they're going to focus on macro, please focus on macro. If they're going to focus on team fight, use that a little bit better of a tool for themselves to get ahead. And in this case, they're not using... They're trying to use both, but both are seems to be not working so perfectly. This is pretty and, aggressive from Sans, though. And Joker comes in at the perfect timing to actually keep Sans. I feel like this is a good play by Joker. Definitely questionable play by Sans. He wants to parry his way out of this one, but I don't think it's going to happen. Either way, level 10 is reached here. They have both camps pushing right now. Uh, the neutral camp, and they stole both uh, the blue side camp, and they took their own red side camp. They have this this huge commitment to killing uh, Joker is going to allow Mighty to just solo shrine with Paula. She's going to clear that up really fast, so they're almost done with that. And Nasong's coming in with a sound barrier with level 10 up. They want to get the kill into Hamlin. They get it. And this is just a mechanical outclassing here by Mighty. It really, really is. Now a second Punisher coming up. This is actually the Arcane Punisher, the strongest one. And look at the waves being pre-cleared here. This is definitely the most not the most not common build coming up. Oh yeah, I didn't even look at that yet. Oh my build god. Coming out. Wow. That's pretty weird. It's also also helps on the shrine though. Yeah, they have the so many different shriners that can solo, like Zarya can solo. Art uh, Arthas could solo, and Vala could solo now with this build. I mean, she could kind of before, but this is, like, making it a lot easier. Um, yeah, I was mostly looking at the builds of Raven, which didn't lead to anything interesting. But, yeah, that's definitely a weird one. Right, good of you to catch that. So it's still harassing here. Yep. They want to actually steal this cap. I think that's a bit of an overextension with level 10 now here. They don't have sound barrier yet. They will in a second. Okay, it looks like Ravens with this relief pressure gonna take this camp. Mighty looks like they wanna invade the siege camp again and maybe double camp here before taking their own. That's kind of where they're leading towards with this wave clear in the mid. I think if Mighty, not Mighty, Raven, if they 
keep on making four man rotation and they have got the split circle top or bottom enjoy the team fight i think they can make this work and they are catching up on the xp for the time they do lose oh the that expulsion that zoning sanctification though gonna make sure that nobody gets picked sound barrier is finally ready the call drops build <laughs> so silly <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Mighty's is going to be able to just walk away with the camp steal. They can go now clear the top cap. This is a, a small win for Raven. But I feel like the use of sanctification there and adaptation is painful. But losing the cap, not as bad as it could have been because they didn't lose anybody there. And they can clear it. They had the top camp pressure, so that's forcing this rotation back. But now Mighty's going to have their camp at a more relevant timing. And they're going to take the neutral camp down here. Bot. Kind of both teams trading even at this point. But Mighty is going to have 13 first, and there's something Raven could do about that. So they kind of just have to cut their losses. I agree with you about the Hawk up wraps being able to soak more. It feels like Arthas is always up there alone. Uh, they're both the solo layers. They both have that matchup, but Arthas seems to be getting way more soaked on, which is a problem. I think that I think that's very true. And and Tychus does get taunted, but great Twilight Dream for defense to turn things around. There's a first kill on to Lucio. That means no more heals, and this is not going to be a winnable fight for Mighty. Sans tries to look for the root to save Moggy. Looks like it won't be necessary. Ooh, Joker. I feel like he needs to get out of here. They're trying to use the slows to get Sans out. Big, big parry. Hamlin, just not good positioning this game. He's going to get caught and killed. The chase is on 3v4. SDU's like, all right, I guess I'm coming back. If we're going to fight, I'll fight. They've got the 13 talent tier advantage. They're looking for the kill here into HA2. His adaptation gets real big value. It's actually so bold for Mighty to contest this. They're just so much more confident with their mechanics, and as time has shown, their mechanics are better. Cannot believe that they turned that around. When they don't even have Lucy on their side to yeah. sustain or to for the speed boost later on when for the chase. And with that turn turn around, Raven has to be some of them even hearth home because they don't have the fountain near them anyhow. To get back to full health, full health, but mighty within that time they're already up twenty two to one. Okay, De Jong very aggressively up in the front here. HD2 coming in for the grab on the Sands. Does get out of it. Hamlin, he's trying to bait him in. Hamlin's position has been so aggressive. This game has been caught so many times. He has so many deaths, actually. You see, this is avoided for now. They're just going to disengage. Nasan healing up. Mima Varian has been get, getting some kills. Yeah, they're only 10 away from capturing this Punisher. Moggy with a decent amount of energy. Looking for that angle. Expulsion zone's up in 20. I think they're just waiting for Odin to be done. Yep, they could actually go for a big rain of vengeance in the choke point too. SD not wanting to commit to it, actually. Perhaps he should. Sanctification now used with the sound barrier. So once these two expire, the fight will end. A huge howling blast here, though. Another defensive Twilight Dream, but it's not going to be enough. Joju should be the first to fall. Good parry here again from Joker. NMX and HD2 totally zoned out. This is actually probably going to be a four-man. Look at this, Moggy. And Nasong swinging around the boop and the speed boost, looking to help secure the kill. Hamlin goes down. At least Terriel escapes. This is now a mortar punisher, three dead, pushing directly towards that keep wall. This is a disaster coming in for Raven. At least their bottom camp is pushing the lane. I believe it's still working on the first wall before the fort. But matters last mighty can just pressure this keep and even try to actually go for another keep or some buildings here. Raven took the aggro off of the keep going Punisher going for the core for some time. It's pretty still healthy though. 60% HP left on the Punisher. They wanna go. There's an explosion zone. There's gonna be a kill for sure. Two kills on Dhaka and that, Sergeant Hammer right away. That is likely game. There's the triple and this was a very one-sided series. Mighty Dominating here in this final map more than the other two. And this was a pretty quick and clean 3-0 from the favored team. I mean, good team fighting. Very good variant play there, actually, by Joker in the end. Lack of confidence in some engages. Lack of punish play from Raven in their own. They had a few moments where they had a lead. They had a few moments where they had an edge. They just retreated every time or, you know, they lost their... their uh, Healing Fountains, as you mentioned, so they had to hearth home. Even though they were they were up in numbers, they had to hearth home, whereas Mighty was able to just walk in, tap back, and uh, take the shrine. Um, 
I, I think the real key, though, is the mechanical play for Mighty is just better. They're team fighting better. They 